The uh, purpose of this video is to show a uh, method for finding the shortest distance from a point to a line. And there's a couple of different ways to do that. This strategy uses both some analytic geometry, uh, finding slopes and distances, that kind of thing, and utilize some trigonometry as well. I will be posting uh, a um, method as well that solves exactly the same problem using only analytic geometry. But if you know some trigonometry, this method actually is shorter than that other strategy. So our example here is we're given this point at 3, negative 5, and we're asked to find the shortest distance or the perpendicular distance, hence the right angle here, to this line. Now, if it doesn't happen to look like a right angle on the device you're looking at this, it's just because of the grid that's used here, or the particular screen, the resolution you have. If you notice, the slope of this line is negative a half, and the slope of this uh, dotted line here is positive 2 because it goes over 1 and up 2, and so a slope of 2 and a slope of negative a half are Perp they are perpendicular lines, so that certainly is a right angle. So the first thing to do here is to find a random point on the line, and we need to make a triangle. That's how we're going to use some trigonometry here. And so y equals negative a half x plus 1 has a y-intercept of 1, so a convenient point to choose would be the point zero, 1. And so there's a, a random point on the line. It doesn't have to be that point, but that's the one I'm going to use. And we'll join that to uh, the 3, negative 5 point. So here's the triangle that we're actually going to use some trigonometry on to calculate this distance. The next thing to do is to find the distance and the slope of that line that we joined the 3, negative 5 point to the 0, 1 point. So the distance and the slope between those. So here's the distance formula. And so the distance between 0, 1 and 3, negative 5, we would go 0 minus 3 and uh, 1 take away negative 5, same as 1 plus 5. And so that works out to the root of 45. This is actually 6 squared is 36. This would be a 9, 36, and 9 add to 45. So that's the root of 45. So that's the root of 45 there. The slope of this line... Uh, we would go 1 take away negative 5, which is the same as 1 plus 5, over 0 take away 3, and so that's 6 divided by negative 3, which is negative 2. So for the slope of that line segment is negative 2. The next thing we're going to do is find this angle right in here, the angle between those two lines, because in this right triangle, once I know that angle, if I know this side, I could find the length of D. That's the strategy using the trigonometry. Now remember the tan function. Tan is uh, opposite over adjacent, which is actually the same as like rise over run. So the tan function is actually the same as the slope. And I'll show you how that works here. Well, I won't just blindly do this. So, for example, let's uh, we're gonna we're gonna find the angle this red line makes with the x-axis, which is this angle here. To use the full fact that the slope is negative two, which is the same as negative two or one, it, I'm actually in this triangle finding this angle. But because this is parallel with the x-axis, this little angle right in here would be the same angle. So to find this angle, I'm going to call it theta, although I'm not going to put theta on the diagram because the diagram is going to get too busy with all the stuff we have on here. So the tan of this angle would be its opposite side, which is negative 2 over 1. So the tan of that angle is negative 2 over 1. So to find the angle theta, we would take the inverse tan of negative 2 over 1 or negative 2. And so in your calculator, that works out to be negative uh, 63.44. The only reason the angle is negative here is because the slope was negative, and I'll talk about that in a moment. If you take the inverse tan of 2, then you get 63.44, and that's all you really need to do. Um, so it, the only reason there's a negative here is because the slope was negative. So this angle in here is 63.44 degrees to two decimal places, which is the same as that little angle there that the red line makes of the x-axis right there. So let's get rid of that triangle. And so now we want to find the angle this uh, y equals negative a half x plus 1 line makes with the x-axis. So this angle here, and so the slope of that line, remember, was uh, from the original line, it was negative a half. So from here down to here, it's a, a rise or a fall of negative 1 and a run of 2. And so to find this angle right in here, the opposite's negative 1 and the adjacent's 2. So the inverse, so tan is equal to... Uh, negative 1 over 2, and so to find the angle, we would take the inverse tan of negative a half. And so that, that angle right there is about 20, well, this becomes a negative calculation just because of the fact that the slope is negative, so I'm just going to label it with 26.57 degrees. So let's get rid of that diagram too. 
Now, the idea is what is this angle right in here? And we can use those two angles to find that. So let's take a look at a simpler example. Very similar diagram, but I'm going to make the angles fairly uh, whole, nice whole round numbers so it's easy to work with. And of course, the idea is to find what this angle is. So let's say we're given this triangle, a diagram, this is 30, and this exterior angle over here is 80. So in the diagram, if that's 80, then this would have to be 100 because between those two angles, that makes a straight line here. So they are supplementary angles. If we take a 80 from 180, that's 100 right there. Now, once we know that's 100 in this triangle, if I want to find the angle at the top, I just subtract the 30 and the 100 from 180 because in a plane triangle, the three angles add to 180. And so 180 subtract those two angles is 50, and so this should be 50 degrees in here. Now what I'd like to point out is that notice that that 50 is actually the difference between the exterior 80 and the 30 in here. See, if you have a triangle and you know two angles, they add to, or the sum of them, is equal to the exterior angle on the opposite side of the triangle. So notice that 50 is 80 minus 30. Uh, we can also actually simplify this calculation up here to show that uh, uh, 80 minus 30 works out to 50. Because if you take the 180 and subtract the 100, that gives you 80. That's the 80, actually. And so those two subtract to 80, and then we would have 80 minus 30 gives you 50 again. So to find this angle here, I can subtract this one and this one. So to find this angle here, I would take the exterior 63.44 and subtract from that the, the interior 26.57. So that's how we can get that angle to be 36.87 degrees. Now just to show you about the uh, uh, calculations here, the inverse tan of negative 2 is negative 63.44. Notice that the inverse tan of 2 is positive 63.44. 4, 3, so, or 4, 4 to around two dozen places. So you don't really need to put the negative in there because all we need to know is how big the angle is, not whether it's positive or negative. And the similar with the tan of negative a half is uh, negative 26.565, etc. The tan of positive a half is, this, is the same positive angle. So now, so now that we know that this angle is 36.87 degrees and we know that this side is the root of 45, we can find the D side. So that's the trig. So we know the hypotenuse here is the root of 45, and we're trying to find the opposite side. That's opposite the angle. This is the hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle. And so the sine of this 36.87 degree angle, remember it's opposite over hypotenuse, so it's D over the root of 45 side here. And so if we cross multiply to find D, D would be the product of the root of 45 and this sine. And so that calculation gives us it's just over 4, 4.02 for the length of this side. So that's the shortest distance from the 3, negative 5 point to that line. Now just to show you, uh, and in the other video I'm going to post to my site shortly, uh, I'm doing this one first, um, using that technique you can find that this point is actually exactly 4.8, negative 1.4. So using the distance formula between that point and this point, so same kind of calculation as this, and there's the distance formula, notice we get 4.0249, etc. So these are actually the same to three, four decimal places. Uh, to, if you want to make them exactly the same, you actually could do this. So instead of doing some rounding here in this calculation, this is the inverse tan of the uh, uh, negative 2 or 2, and this is the inverse tan of the negative a half. So if you just in your calculator didn't do any rounding, if you took the inverse tan of 2 and subtracted the inverse tan of a half, so there's no rounding at all, and so that's a more accurate representation of that angle. Instead of 36.87, it's 36.8698, etc. And then so the root of 45 times the sine of that answer, notice that this works out to all the dozen places, as far as my calculator show, exactly the same as this exact calculation here. So that's just a verification at the end that uh, you do get the same value as this other method using only analytic geometry I'm going to post as well. So that's how you can use some analytic geometry and trigonometry to find the shortest distance from a point to a line. There's also a formula too, uh, but uh, this is, uh, I just wanted to show the particular method here. And that's the end of the video.